They say there's a bit of Ireland in all of us. Irish Living brings the best of Ireland to you. Irish Living, brought to you in part by Guinness Draft Stout. Drink responsibly. Brilliant. And welcome to Irish Living. The series that takes you around Ireland to the places you most want to visit. Now today we are here in Wicklow, the Garden of Ireland, just an hour south of Dublin. I'm going to be trying some of Ireland's extreme 4x4 driving here at Brook Lodge. And I'm going to be taking it just a little bit easier than that in the luxurious Well Spa at the Brook Lodge Hotel, where I'm going to be treating myself to an afternoon of pampering and well-being. But before Emma treated herself to her afternoon at the spa, she journeyed to Glendalough for some spiritual sustenance. Glendalough is a place of outstanding beauty, shrouded in mystery. The English name Glendalough comes from the Gaelic Glown Dalacha which translates as the Valley of the Two Lakes. During the Ice Age, giant glaciers were responsible for sculpting this three mile long valley. The clear glassy water and beautiful woodlands make it a mecca for hill walkers, archeologists, ecologists, and day trippers alike. Although only 20 miles south of Dublin, on arrival you feel as though you ventured to another time. It was here that St. Kevin saw peace and solitude in the 6th century and founded a monastic settlement that would become a major centre of learning in Europe. Glendalock is the ideal place for a picnic or some time relaxing away from the hustle and bustle of the big smoke. Now there are a number of walking trails available of varying distance or you could join a guided tour. The 100 foot round tower dominates the skyline. One of the things which intrigues visitors most is why the entrance door to the tower is so high off the ground. Joan, the door of the Round Tower is famously a couple of metres off the ground. Why is that? Well, the main reason was a structural reason, Emma, in that the doorway was to ensure the structural soundness of the building. The majority of Round Towers have very shallow foundations. Now, the doorway and Glendalough was three metres above the ground because the foundations of the round tower were only a metre deep. So that's one of the main reasons why the doorway was placed into the tower, almost like a window. Furthermore, the tower was used as a treasury. Valuables were kept in the tower and one of the reasons why the doorway is so high up was to ensure the safety of the valuables of the monastery. Okay, that makes sense. Now talk to me about St Kevin. St. Kevin apparently came from an area which is now known as Tala and he was led over the mountains by an angel. He was led over the mountains to Glendalough and he brought some followers with him and he founded this monastic settlement where the two rivers meet right behind us on a natural bank. Now it's believed that Kevin really was a hermit at heart and he wanted to live a life of seclusion and isolation and he retreated back up into his cave overlooking the upper lake and that cave still exists today it's known as saint kevin's bed he lived until a very old age we're believed that he was lived until he was 120 years of age now i know here in glentilock there's a very famous story about saint kevin tell me about that yes there are several of course legends associated with saint kevin mainly to do with his ascetic lifestyle one, and probably the most famous, is the fact that one day Kevin was praying 
in the upper lake mm -hmm. with his two arms outstretched. And a blackbird flew into one of his hands. Right. Now this blackbird started to build her nest in one of his palms. Now we believe that Kevin spent his whole entire time in the lake while this nest was being built and he waited until the eggs were hatched. And this is why you always see pictures of St. Kevin with a blackbird's nest Fantastic. in his hand. Great story. Yeah. Now, I believe there are seven churches here in Glendalock. Is that right? Seven? There are seven churches Tell altogether. Tell me about those. St. Kevin's uh, Monastery is known as the Monastery of the Seven Churches. In actual fact, there are nine churches in Glendalock. But in ancient Irish history, seven was always considered to be a very magical number. And Glendalock has several churches, mainly due to the fact that these churches served as satellite churches and shrines to particular saints. The Cathedral of Glendalock was the most important church, and this is where the majority of services were said. However, there were several other satellite churches built around the valley. And as I mentioned, these were mainly used as shrines to particular saints. For example, we have St. Kevin's Church, the church which is the only church today which still retains its roof because it was built completely out of stone. Now, Glendalough has been described as the centre for learning in Europe. Why is that? Well, of course, Glendalough was considered to be almost like an early university. And during the fall of the Roman Empire, of course, a lot of Irish saints branched out throughout Europe reintroducing Christianity. And that's one of the reasons why many wealthy landowners sent their children to monasteries like Glendalough to be educated by the monks in the hope that they would become perhaps an abbot of Glendalough or another monastery. And that's one of the reasons why Glendalough was known as one of the centres of education and learning throughout Europe. Joan, is there a very big difference between Glendalough now and in St Kevin's time? Well, when St Kevin came to Glendalough, it would have been more or less wilderness. There would have been nobody living here. We believe that there was very little prehistoric activity in Glendalough. Now, when the monastery flourished in the early medieval period, there would have been a considerable amount of people living here. How many? Do you know? It's thought that there could have been between 1,000 to 1,500 people living in this monastic community. Now today in Glendalough, there are very few people living in the valley. So you have to envisage quite a busy bustling place. Of course, Glendalough was a great centre of pilgrimage and pilgrims came in their droves here. Seven pilgrimages to Glendalough equated to one pilgrimage to Rome. And therefore, there could have been up to 2,000 people living in Glendalough and passing through at any given particular time, especially during the summer months. It's almost like our modern tourism industry. Well, look, Joan, it all sounds absolutely fascinating. I'm going to have to go around and take a look for myself, but thank you. Enjoy it. Thank you. I've just invented Guinness Draft in a bottle. Brilliant! I've also invented the scented oil diffuser. Scented oil? <laughs> Ooh! Ah! A bear trap? Brilliant! Ah! Ah! A portable toilet? Brilliant! Ah! The spoon? Brilliant! Ouch! For more bloopers, go to Guinness.com. Please drink responsibly. When you're on holiday, do you ever tire of just taking it easy and look for that adrenaline rush? Well, if you're the more active type at Brook Lodge, there's a variety of activities to choose, from horse riding to something a little more racy. As we're driving down here, Andrew, what we're going to be doing is we're keeping in the first gear because it's steep, but it's not that steep, but it's very, very slippery, and we weigh three tons. Right. So the problem is not the speed we're going now, but if you need to stop in a hurry, we won't be able to stop that whole momentum going forward. So that's why we're just taking it nice and handy coming down the hill. 
so we'll actually be 60 degrees in the first place. We'll hit about 50, 55 degrees today. As you can see, we're coming down, uh, coming off the mountain now, we're heading down towards into the forest where Andrew is going to get his feet as well wet. We've got four and a half feet of water, which is just above the bonnet, the top of the bonnet there. So what we want is to create a wave, a bow wave, like in front of a front of a boat, have that wave going away from you. So it's keeping a constant speed. Keeping a constant even speed. So am I going to get wet? Hopefully not. Um, it's a quite a deep water uh, section that we have to negotiate. Um, as we were saying, we're going to be climbing up to the left hand side. Our line has to be perfect because if it doesn't, we will fall over into the ravine on our right. It's not going to stall, is that? Nope, okay. it's not. A bit more speed. That's it. That's it. Speed up. Speed up. That's it. Speed up. Speed up. More gas. Oh! A bit more gas. A bit more gas. <laughs> I can feel the water on my feet! Oh, the right hand side. Straighten up. Straight, that's perfect. That's perfect. Woohoo! That was good. good. I can feel the water coming into my feet. So we knock off and we put it into gear. Well oh, done. Brilliant. Well done. That was great fun. We just drove through the water, it came up right up to the bonnet level. And he was like, put your foot on the gas, put your foot on the gas. But I could feel the water coming up on my feet. So your natural reaction is to try and take your foot off the, maybe I'm just a wussy with my feet in the water. But your natural reaction is to take your feet up. But you've got to keep your feet down. It's, it's a really strange sensation, but great, great fun. McCredden Village and adjoining Brook Lodge Hotel is a unique development only one hour from Dublin. The village takes its name from the pre-Christian Celtic chief named Creddon, who was allegedly killed by his enemies and brought back to life by St. Kevin. Now, it had an unusual beginning. Three brothers scoured Ireland in search of what they considered to be a perfect village. When they could not find what they were looking for, they decided to create it themselves. A village and much more. McCreddon is now home to a smokehouse, a bakery, a microbrewery and its own pub, Actons. It also has the storerooms, a treasure trove of all things organic. This all looks fantastic. How long have you guys been here? We will be here six years next October. And it looks like you sell absolutely everything. Yes, we sell everything from organic cola bottles to locally grown organic vegetables and organic bread from our very own on-site bakers. Now, I've been informed that you are very famous for your garlic pesto, is that right? Mm, yes. This is a wild garlic pesto and it's picked locally mm. by our chefs. Oh, and what's in it? We have wild garlic, mm -hmm. olive oil, sunflower oil, lemon juice, pine nuts, parmesan, salt and pepper. And would you like to try some? I'd love to try some. It sounds absolutely gorgeous. Oh, lovely. Okay. Oh my God. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to stink for the entire day, but it's beautiful. No need to worry. Mm -hmm. We can always give you some organic chocolates. Mm. I saw these when I came <laughs> in. Now, is it true? that organic chocolate is less fattening than regular chocolate. If you go for 70% organic chocolate it is, but I'm afraid that's milk, so no. Just I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. <laughs> I'm going to say them all. Lorna, thank you very much. You're very welcome, Emma. But as well as selling the very best of organic delicacies, Brook Lodge also caters for all aspects of your physical well-being, providing everything you need for a relaxing break. Amy, I feel like I've actually died and gone to heaven. 
What are you doing to me? This is part of the hammam treatment, Emma. Basically, okay. what we do, we start off with a full body exfoliation. Mm -hmm. um, after that, we would take you across into the steam room where mm -hmm. your relaxation would begin. It also allows the pores to open to absorb the oils then that we use for the massage. Okay, now I believe you do some sort of couple treatment that involves being slathered with mud. We have two double treatment rooms specially right. designed for couples where they can go and have simultaneous treatments together. Yeah. Um, you apply these um, exfoliating detoxifying muds to your skin. Right. Um, there's also a facial mask that you apply. It's a non-therapist treatment, so you would apply these muds to yourselves. Mm -hmm. You have the treatment room for an hour, nobody would disturb you. Oh. Um, you apply the muds and then you go into the steam chamber where you sit for about 45 minutes to allow the exfoliating and detoxifying to begin in the steam chambers. Okay. And then you will come out and shower off the mud. Oh, sounds gorgeous. It's fun. <laughs> now you have a couple of kind of unique things here. First of all, what I'm lying on is amazing here. Yes, this is the hammam table, granite table, mm -hmm. which is heated. This is one of our signature treatment rooms, the others being like the um, surreal mud chambers that we have. Right. Also, we have a flotation chamber, mm -hmm. which um, it's you're in there for about 45 minutes and it's equivalent to like eight hours sleep. Okay, and then also all the water comes from a well, is that right? It is, it's all natural spring water, yeah. Right, and you actually have a well on the premises? Yes, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so how much longer do I actually have? You have about another 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, so 15 or 20 minutes of detoxing massage. Yeah. Quality Emma time. You need to go away. I've just invented Guinness Draft in a bottle. Brilliant! I've also invented the scented oil diffuser. Scented oil? <laughs> Ooh! Ah! A bear trap? Brilliant! Ah! Ah! A portable toilet! Brilliant! The spoon! Brilliant! Ouch! For more bloopers, go to Guinness.com. Please drink responsibly. Well, it's easy to see where I am, but this is no ordinary 18-hole golf course. Druid's Glen here in Newtown, Mount Kennedy, County Wicklow, is better known as the Augusta of Europe. It's been home to the Irish Open four times and has seen such great names as Sergio Garcia, John Daly, Nick Faldo, and now me.